Okay. Let's get to the lawsuit. Here's the lawsuit. We're going to read through this. This is the uh, lawsuit versus Christian Combs. Again, filed strategically. By the way, you, 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 you want to know also when you're dealing with a lawyer who is on some shit too? Christian Combs' birthday. King Combs. Born on the 1st. It wasn't filed on the 1st. But it was reported on the 1st. I'm going to tell you why. The lawyer sent out shit. Somehow they, 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 they contacted some blogs. It wasn't me. And they said, hey, we intend to file. On his birthday. So on his birthday, they let the press know because they didn't file yet. We intend to file. Three days later, lo and behold, we actually have a lawsuit. If you think life is such a Hollywood script that on your birthday, someone who wants to extract money out of you, right, lets the press know, hey, we're going to sue this guy for the this action. Probably ruined his birthday a bit if it wasn't ruined already with everything going on in his family. But yeah, I got him. Announce his, your intentions on, on his birthday. Three days later. Here we go. Here we go. So this is the uh, civil uh, lawsuit filed in Superior Court of California in the county of Los Angeles. And it's Grace Omar Shia versus Christian Combs. By the way, Diddy is also on this. Sean Combs, a.k.a. Diddy. An individual and John and Jane Doe's one to ten, and ABC Corporation's one to ten. The complaints for damages are assault, battery, sexual assault, premises liability, aid and abetting, intentional infliction of emotional distress, negligent infliction of emotional distress, and their demand for a jury trial. The plaintiff, through her attorneys, which is again, Mr. Tyrone Blackburn is a European Caucasian female who works as a stewardess in the yachting industry since 2018. The plaintiff's love of yachting started at an early age and was the foundation on which she built a career. Through yachting, she traveled the world, met new friends, colleagues, and enjoyed a very successful career. So basically, this is like the air hostess for like a fucking yacht, right? Through, throughout her career, the plaintiff has always worked well in teams and received high praises and great feedback from her managers and colleagues. They consistently received exemplary reviews from her clients for ex excellent customer service as well glowing references over the past five years or a few years they received constant promotions and never been rejected for any position she has applied for prior to being sexually and this is where you know this lawyer is spinning a web he's spinning a web of these niggas are guilty look at the picture he uses of christian combs Look at the picture he uses of Christian Combs in a complaint. Prior to being sexually assaulted by defending Christian Combs, the plaintiff planned to work the entirety of her career in hospitality in the yachting industry. Why is this important? Basically saying, it's probably going to be lost earnings. I guarantee the next thing they're going to say is like, oh, they have to stop working. Unfortunately, those plans have been derailed due to the trauma plaintiff continues to have as a result of the assault. Defendant Christian Combs is a 25-year-old auto-tuned and heavily edited rapper. This lawyer is a petty, is a petty motherfucker. Auto-tuned and heavily edited rapper. Like, bro, you're writing this shit like a sneak this gang. Boy, if you're trying to if you're trying to be a writer, man, go, go get in the studio with Drake and them boys and Kendrick and them and, and go write this songs at each other. Like, what are you doing? Why is the lawyer talking like this? He's a 25-year-old rapper. That's what he is. Not auto-tuned and heavily edited rapper. Unfortunately, as the saying says, the look, what? This goes more like a narrative more than accusations. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Well, Diddy hasn't been proven guilty of anything. He hasn't been adjudicated guilty. He has been sued and he's alleged to have done things. But what, what do you mean the apple doesn't fall far, far from the tree? Defendant Sean Combs, who has also been accused of several acts of sexual assault, rape, sexual violence, and drugging, among other deplorable conduct, is the father of Christian Combs, who seemingly taken after his father 
and the family business of reckless party and drugging others, sexual violence, and other illegal conduct. Specifically, defendant Combs, and King Combs is the second child of the billionaire, um, Sean Combs, and his late ex-partner, Kim Porter. Upon information, I believe that King Combs resides in the city, uh, city of Beverly Hills, California, in L.A., Sean Combs is a rapper, record executive, and popularly known by the stage name Puff Daddy, Puffy, P. Diddy, Diddy, Brother Love, or Love. He became famous in the 90s. Okay, they're talking more about um, Diddy more than his son. During the relevant period, defendants John and Jane Doe are currently, all right, let, let, let's get to the, uh, now they talk about why it's in that jurisdiction. Facts common to the case. She was working on Victorious, a super yacht built by Ack Yachts. And owned and operated by Fraser. She worked as a temporary steward, secondary steward for the company Equinom. And also worked as a temporary position on the uh, for the month, for a month, on Victorious. Then was subsequently offered a permanent position due to her professionalism and passion for the job and great customer service skills. On or about September 2022, the plaintiff had been a part of a dedicated team at the Monica Boat Show, blah, blah, blah. Okay, okay, okay. And... 2022, the plaintiff and her team was advised that the yacht has been successfully chartered for the 2022 holiday period. They changed her personal holiday family plans to accommodate the charter service and flew to St. Martin to prepare for the yacht, to prepare the yacht for the service. They soon learned the, the client who chartered the yacht was defendant Sean Combs and his family. Sean Combs leased the yacht and had full control of the staff and premises of the yacht. Although plaintiff was used to working in a discreet and VIP environment. This was one of her first time working with an A-list celebrity. Because of this, plaintiff and the rest of the, the team assigned to the yacht were determined to make the holiday special for the defendants and their family. For the duration of the trip, the plaintiff was assigned the 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. shift along with one other crew member. This shift, commonly known as a late shift, was very busy. Late shift's duties include dinner, drink service for the clients for the entire 12-hour period, Dinner and drink service had to be carried out with minimum staff support or backup during the night shift since only two individuals were assigned. Although defendant Sean Combs were, was typically on the yacht, his sons Christian Combs and Justin Combs were staying in a luxury villa nearby but joined their father aboard the yacht most evenings. During the second week of the charter service, there was a significant amount of party and drugs which caused the guests to stay up throughout the night. The makeup of the yacht quickly evolved from just Diddy and his family to include a constant rotation of suspected, see again, suspected, what the fuck is a suspected sex worker? And other A-list celebrities such as French Montana and, huh, see, you see how the, all these lawsuits tie into each other? Cuba Gooden Jr. Defendants, Sean Combs, turned what was sold as a wholesome family excursion into a hedonistic environment. See it? According to the plaintiff, it resulted in an unexpected increase in workload for her and her colleagues, as well as unwanted exposure to a, exposure to a lot of unlawful drug use, sex work, and general chaos. It created an extremely hazardous environment. For example, guests often demanded drinks at 6 a.m. Staff was often treated with disrespect. Suspected sex workers were sprawled out on concerts about the yacht, and it was difficult to distinguish which bottles of alcohol were laced with drugs and which bottles were not. Didn't I tell you there, this thing is right in the lawsuit? Tying in, into the other lawsuits. You just randomly throw in there like, oh yeah, it's hard to to distinguish which bottles are laced and which weren't. What? Nigga, this is like the third page of the fucking lawsuit, huh? Lace drinks. It's important to know as a bartender, plaintiff understands the impact of alcohol and the likelihood that a person will not be generally become intoxicated following one mixed drinks. Because of this, plaintiff found it very suspicious that after one shot of they named Diddy's brand or former brand, De Leon, or one mixed drink, various women on the yacht will be falling over themselves, panicking or passing out. This led plaintiff to reasonably believe the alcohol given to the women were laced with drugs. This lawyer is going to be the reason why people get back on Diddy's side. You see, Cassie's a real victim. Cassie's a real story. Cassie's not doing it for the 
salacious shit. I guarantee what she's told the cops and the feds, she didn't put in a lawsuit or has never said online. These people are playing blog games, internet games, salacious details. And all these lawsuits are starting to carry similar themes. You know why this is sick a little bit? I don't know if this woman is a victim, so I don't want to diminish her plight. But the way that it seems like the Little Rod and even this situation, and I don't know if Little Rod's a victim too. The, the way that they're starting to paint a picture is a very disgusting picture of extortionism, shakedowns, and trying to ruin another man's life because you can't extract quick, easy cash from them. Mark my words. If the public starts to sympathize, because the Fed investigation is going to be a while. If they start to sympathize with Diddy, it's not because of Cassie. Cassie is shut the fuck up, got out of Dodge. She's doing the thing. She always... Like, if we, all, if we thought she only wanted money, it's clear now that she wants justice, too. She's talking to the cops. She's not doing interviews. She's not being seen. She's talking to the cops. Everybody else, they're just saying a lot. They're saying a lot for media to talk about. I believe this one lawyer and the victims that he's, I think he's going to get three or four more. I think he probably looking for the guy right now that can say, did he fucked him without his consent? This was the point that said, this is starting to stink now. Now it's starting to feel like y'all extorted. The gassy thing at first, I believe it. The other one, I was like, damn, did he? You probably was fucking up. The little Roger, I was like, oh, damn. Did you've done a lot of people wrong, brother. By now, I'm like, all right, bro. Let's keep it going. Here's also the interesting thing. The woman who's claiming that she got R-worded. Wait, wait. I know y'all reading ahead of me. Don't read ahead of me. She claims, she claims, she claims on the same yacht that she got R-worded on, guess who was there? Lil Rod. It's the first time we've ever gotten a, a, anybody say Lil Rod has been significant. But she says Lil Rod was there. Of course, he didn't do nothing. But he was there. He could vouch. Guess who represents both of them? Does it start to smell a little stink? Let's keep it going. Plaintiff was aware that Rodney Jones, a.k.a. Mr. Jones, a.k.a. Lil Rod, a producer that was employed to work on the Love album, Off the Grid, was required to be on standby for musical recordings often late in the night. The Love album is uh, the fifth studio uh, album by American rapper and producer uh, Sean Diddy Combs, released on September 15th, 2023. He was accepted as an extended member of the service staff and spent time with the plaintiff at the service bar and piano room where he played the piano. On or about the morning of December 8th, 2022, the evening shift started normal. About 5 a.m., plaintiff um, was messaged on the on-duty phone that the defendant, Christian Combs, would be joined the yacht by Tender, which is a smaller craft that runs back and forth from a larger yacht and used for servicing and providing support and entertainment to a private or charter yacht. Defendant King Combs wanted to be brought over to the Victorious to record in the yacht's makeshift recording studio with Lil Rod. Although it was not unheard of of King Combs to come aboard at such a late hour, he usually stayed at his dwelling offshore overnight, particularly when there was no partying on board on any given night. King Combs arrived in tender and was heavily intoxicated. The plaintiff suspects that King Combs was intoxicated from a mixture of narcotics and alcohol. 
Upon entering the recording studio, King Combs immediately start ordering that tequila shots be poured from a bottle of alcohol that he may have, not he did, may have brought onto the yacht. Ironically, defendants King Combs was playing Cassie, me and you. Uh, ironically, defendants King Combs was playing Cassie's me and you. What? Was playing Cassie, me and you, was playing in the background. Cassie was the artist on the Sean Combs and was his former love interest who also accused Sean Combs of. This is starting to stink. Chat, when I got that call yesterday, nobody knew that Cassie, me and you, was playing in the background. I only bought, y'all seen me buy the lawsuit on air. Some random person calls me and sends me the lawsuit yesterday. You see why this shit don't smell good to me? I could sit here and, and you see, what I believe is going on is people thinking that a nigga like me, because we've gotten record views, like people want to hear more about the story. They love, love my deep dives than they want to, they want, they want to use me to purport and to further their propaganda. That's why they sent only me the goddamn audio. That's why now in now when I have the audio and the lawsuit says Cassie's song is playing, I have it to match. Blogs are going crazy, but this shit stinks. I was born at night, just not last night. I always tell these motherfuckers, I don't have a horse in the race. I make money if any horse wins. I don't care. Please don't try to use me. You're right. Deep dives, no diddy. You're right. I'm also saying I'm not defending Diddy. I think if Diddy gets taken down, it will be Cassie's face on the stand. I think Diddy has done some shit. What I believe now is that there's ancillary portions trying to siphon off money and trying to do all the weird shit. Hoping that platforms like mine will just ignore common sense. Or ignore the, I won't say the truth, but ignore like, wait, that's kind of odd. Just use some critical thinking. I'll keep going though. In the studio, defendant King Combs asked that the plaintiff bring the shots to the recording studio and plaintiff obliged. She was the only servant steward at the time. The plaintiff noticed immediately that, uh, that he was particularly attentive with her, which she considered very appropriate. He was attentive to you and you considered it inappropriate? Okay. Oh my God, I can't even believe y'all saying this. Super nifty Susie one. You said Ack was paid off by Diddy's camp or received a threat to backpedal or else? Please stop being so dense. Like, I'm here for the truth. If, if y'all are here for me to push narratives, it's not what it is. Nobody said Diddy was innocent. Would you want me to say Diddy's guilty? I Diddy's guilty. Cool. I, I, th that's, not my, that's not my concern. My concern is that we have a possible real situation that frauds is coming around to try to exploit. Let's really get into Diddy and what he really did. He probably is guilty. He probably will go to jail. My personal thoughts, nobody else's. But I feel like I'm being played with as a platform, as a man, and as someone who's just not dumb as a box of rocks. When someone else is trying to get a bag for themselves and they're saying, let's play the media like a fiddle. That's what I'm saying. None of, and by the way, most of this is accused. Actually, this lawsuit is accusing his son, not even the dad. I don't know Christian Combs. I don't care about Christian Combs. If I didn't keep it this honest, you should think I'm being biased. You see, if you came into this thinking that all of these salacious 
allegations against Diddy all were true, you have a problem. What's probably going to be likely in these situations, maybe half is true. Half is true. Some is kind of true. The others are capping. It's always like that. Don't they say there's like usually three sides to every story? That person's story, that person's story, then the real story. I'm, by the way, here's the thing too. And, and I'm, I'm just being honest. I'm also not saying Lil Rod is not a victim, nor this woman. But I'm going to be honest with you. The way it's being played, given the history of this attorney, is given vibes of shakedown and extortion, which because I just played you the Jason Lee shit, I just showed you that the nigga, like an actual judge in a whole nother case that he has, literally is saying to him, bro, you're doing this weird shit of filing crazy lawsuits, salacious, um, salacious details, using it for media propaganda, getting people to settle, and you're you're misusing the court. We're ref we're referring you to a grievance com um committee. I'm not making this out of thin air. This is some shit that's actually happening. By the way, if you think this is a defense of Diddy, Cassie was not represented by this nigga. There's other situations that they're investigating that don't got. They're even looking up. Did Diddy shoot Shorty in the face? They're de they're determined to get Diddy, and I think they will. So me doing this is not a defense of Diddy. It's the defense of not only the process and also how we go about looking into shit. People have identified that, we, like, you know, we do a lot of hip hop um, things and they try to use us. Let's try, hey, hey, I've never said this before. I'll say it now. There's time that I had to or I felt I had to. I had to, like, really get the, you know. Like, even with Tori, I'm like, yo, Tori, oh, I don't know if you have any type of agendas. It's not coming out through my platform. You're, you can't use me. I need to verify things. I need to verify things. And that would just mean be like, you know, just kind of hearing certain shit and be like, oh, well, yeah, no, you, you, this is some relevant news that you probably should put out. And I'm like, ah, I'm not an echo chamber for your plight. Even though I respect you and I fuck with you. Show me the proof. Where's the proof? I need to see proof. When I see proof, I'll go with it. But let's not just run with everything. Because what happens when you're a me let me tell you, this, media, I keep telling you, is the most influential and powerful thing to me in any society. Because it has the power to change and influence. It could, it could spark a thought. It could change how people think. There's a lot of people who are sheep. They look to somebody else for their opinion. So you know what you do? Look at all the billionaires. They just buy media companies. It's the reason why motherfucking Elon Musk bought Twitter, even though that's social media. It's the reason why you have um, Jeff Bezos, who owns Amazon. He, I believe he owns, um, is it Washington Post? Can't remember which one it is. You own these media platforms that you could, on a subtle level, influence people. I'm not bought. I'm not owned. I'm not taking payments to push narratives. I'm operate and sometimes i'm wrong i ain't gonna lie sometimes i might be wrong but i'm going off of what i think is gener generally fair and unbiased and you know what i mean like there's some dense people in the audience if you want me to say every 20 seconds diddy is going to jail and he's guilty or i think he's guilty or something cool but me pointing this out that this shit kind of smells a little stink that it don't seem good is not me defending diddy trust me and by the way, I can't wait to go talk about his his new PR thing because I think his PR shit is is he's trying it, but I think it's, it's played out at this point. We're gonna talk about that anyway. Let me keep reading. The plaintiff noticed he was immediately particularly attentive with her, which she considered appropriate. However, plaintiff became concerned when he insisted that she take shots of tequila that he may have brought on the yacht under pressure and wanted to be polite. She obliged. Prior to this, the plaintiff witness defendant King Combs created a black Santa video which showed him the man and the captain and various head of departments and crews to take a shot of tequila with him. <coughs> As this was a pattern established by the captain of the yacht and the defendant, Sean Combs, a.k.a. Diddy, the plaintiff felt uncomfortable. Wait, uh, no, 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 yeah. 
uncomfortable, well, no, the plaintiff felt comfortable, sorry, that Mr. Jones was present and didn't think anything more of it. She felt more like it would be like taking one shot and he would let her return to the pantry. According to the plaintiff, at this point, the mood changed and things became sinister. King Combs insisted that plaintiff stay chatting, that she sat beside him. And she resisted and remained polite, asked to leave, but King Combs became aggressive and insisted that she continue to take further shots and sit beside him. At this point, King Combs violently grabbed the plaintiff's arm and began to hurt her. He pulled the plaintiff to the seat beside him and prevented her from getting up. Plaintiff insisted that she had to return to the pantry, but her pleas fell on deaf ears, angered. Uh, no, no, okay. Uh, fell on deaf ears. Angered, King Combs forced the plaintiff to take another shot. So now they're saying that he's grabbing her and like, yo, take a shot, right? And he says, plaintiff was quite scared and realized she was in a very dangerous situation. The plaintiff was feeling the effect of tequila shots and quickly suspected that the tequila was spiked. At this point, the situation escalated and the plaintiff started to be physically assaulted by the defendant Combs. He touched plaintiff's legs, breast, whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. At this point, the situation ex escalated and the plaintiff started to be physically assaulted by defendants. This isn't Christian Combs, this is Diddy. What the fuck? By, began to be physically assaulted by Diddy. Diddy touched the plaintiff's legs, breast, anus. Wow. How the fuck you touch somebody's anus unless they're naked? What the fuck? Anus and vagina. He also tried to kiss her and proceeded to kiss her neck, face, and hands. The timeline at this point is very blurry and vague to the plaintiff as she does not recall what exactly happened to her due to the effects of the spiked tequila shots. Lucky for the plaintiff, due to the defendant Sean Combs' insistent on Mr. Jones recording everything, Mr. Jones has a recording of defendant Sean Combs drugging and sexually assaulting her. Chat. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to keep my my comments to myself and read the lawsuit as is. Because I'm not trying to influence y'all how y'all think about this. Okay? But ironically, the only reason why there's allegedly proof is because Lil Rod recorded. Okay? Defending Christian Combs. Yo, it's shot o'clock! That's what King Combs says. The, uh, the, by the way, I'm assuming this is in the lawsuit. I'm assuming there has to be audio that matches this. So King Combs says, yo, it's shot o'clock! The stewardess, the plaintiff, says, nah, I'm not doing any more shots. Christian. And then King Combs says, everybody, we got to take a shot. And the plaintiff said, I'll just put mine, uh, I'll just put the ledge. He said, no, 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 no. Take the whole thing. No diddy, okay? The plaintiff said, no, you will take it as well. King Combs says, take the whole shot. And the plaintiff says, I'm only doing it as long as you take it as well. Then King Combs says, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't taking nothing. Please. Oh, okay. All right. This is kind of like crazy audio. Now. All right. I got to hear this in audio form. What the fuck? I'm not doing, doing it as long as you take it. Well, I ain't gonna lie. I, so King Combs says, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't taking nothing. Please, please take the shot. Okay. Now, now you see, you'll realize how human and how realistic and, and, and honest I, I am. If this in all, is, is in audio form, like something you could hit play on, th this is what they should have sent me. Don't send me a fucking song of Cassie. Whoever that was who sent me that shit. Whoever, whoever it is who sent me that, who sent me that shit, this is what you should have sent me. But if this is captured on tape, where she's saying, I'm only doing it as long as you take it. And he's like, nah, I ain't gonna lie, I ain't taking shit. You take the shot. And he says, wait, are you drugging me? And she, and he says, take the shot. Hey, yo, play me another beat because now, 
So below is the transcript of the sexual assault. It says, the plaintiff says, this isn't an offer. Christian Combs says, yo, you said what? Now, I ain't gonna lie. If this is on audio, this looks bad. This looks bad. This looks bad. Christian Combs, hey. And, and here's, you know, for the smart ones who watch me, here's a nuance of everything I've said thus far. I'm not saying these people can't be victims. I'm saying that it's being wielded in a web of trying to extort money or trying to gain settlements rather than go go to court, right? So I'm not saying these people ain't victims. So possibility that Shorty could be a victim, possibly that Little Rock could be a victim. Here's the thing. It feels like this lawyer has these underhanded uh, tactics to try to get settlements rather than go to the court, right? Oh, we're going to say mad shit in the press, get them embarrassed. They ain't going to want to go to court. They just want to pay. All right, here we go. I ain't going This don't sound too good. It's a Cassie, Me, and You featuring P. Diddy and Young Jock song playing in the background. So the plaintiff says, this is not an offer. Oh, no, well, the plaintiff says, this is not an offer. Uh, King Combs says, you said what? Plaintiff says, I can't. I'm swapping out. I can't do it. I'm sorry, darling. King Combs says, nah, we need you. Plaintiff says, I'm going to stop. I have to go. I have to go. Honestly, I'm like losing sleep. I have to go now. King Combs says, you're the best one on the ship, though. Um, plaintiff says, what do you mean? It's like, who's going to replace you? Plaintiff says, well, who's going to replace me? King Combs said, fuck that. That's going to be trash, though. You feel me? Then the plaintiff's like, excuse me, don't touch my leg like that. I, I move my leg where I want to. If I want to do this, then I will. You don't touch my legs like that. King Combs says, listen, you and everybody in the crew is great. It's kind of incoherent conversation. I got to hear the audio. Plaintiff says, I can't. I have to go down. I have to go down. King Combs says, no, yo, tell me, yo, listen. Plaintiff says, what? Say, like, like, say you just vibing with me the whole time. And the plaintiff says, I can't. I promise. Uh, I promise. I, I wish I could, but I can't. Unless I say that you guys requested me. Oh, she basically says she has to switch shifts or go do something else. And and King Combs like, no, you don't. You stay here with me. And she's like, no, no, no they're gonna get mad, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, well, I, I can't unless you I say that you guys requested me. And he says, Yes! Who can I talk to right now? Who can I talk to? I'm gonna say I requested you right now. She said, Well, you could take all you could take your hand off my ass for the first thing. And they stop it at that. So according to the plaintiff, she said she would have to be requested because she knew anyone of authority would have a, would who would approve the request was asleep. Defendants um, Christian Combs would have not been able to contact them, and the plaintiff would have to leave. After being assaulted in the recording studio, plaintiff uh, attempted to resume her duties at night. She made her way to the pantry where another steward, who was a assigned to take over her shift, a colleague recognized the plaintiff was visibly. Uh, the visibly, visibly intoxicated and shocked, trying to finish the shift. Shortly after returning to the pantry, King Combs called for the plaintiff. He went looking for her and demanded that she find him in a place. She find him a place to sleep on a yacht. At such a late hour, there was no spare cabins for defendant um, King Combs to stay in. Despite this, he refused to go back to the shore. The most acceptable place for him to sleep that night was in the cinema. The plaintiffs directed him to the cinema, which was commonly used as an extra sleeping area. The cinema has one door ex ex to exit and enter. Plaintiff entered the room and defendant Combs blocked her from exiting. He, retre he retreated to a corner of the room. The plaintiff retreated to a corner of the room and defendant Combs be became physically and extremely aggressive. He cornered the plaintiff and started to grope her. Uh, then, he, then the plaintiff pushed back constantly. King Combs then took off all of his clothes. His penis was erect and he grabbed her arms and was trying to force plaintiff to perform oral copulation on him, which is head. Um, the plaintiff began fighting Mr. Combs, which is King Combs, and not too long after her partner was on board, entered the cinema. This started defendant Combs, or startled defendant Combs, and the plaintiff was finally able to leave. The plaintiff's partner became concerned and went looking for the plaintiff um, after she had not returned to her room after her shift ended. The morning after, the plaintiff complained to the yacht captain, um, Pitar Makov. Makov berated the plaintiff. 
he lacked compassion for or concern and failed to investigate and insisted that the plaintiff was probably voluntarily partying with guests. She was not. Um, he added to in injury by assigning plaintiff to work in front of the house, which required personally serving defendant King Combs while they were on the yacht. Plaintiff uh, was not provided an option to be isolated or not have to serve defendant King Combs. Plaintiff was 25 years of age at the attack. Based on blah, 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 da. Look, based on the information and belief that defendant Sean Combs' employees, including his drug mule, Brendan Mew, his chief of staff, you see you're seeing the same names? Christina Corum and the second in line, Frankie Centella, learned of what occurred and informed um, what? Oh. oh, so they don't even know. They're assuming that all these people know. Okay. Shortly after the captain received a generous tip from King Combs in order to keep the captain quiet and force um, and keep him protecting the plaintiff or taking action on her behalf, only a few members of the shift staff was required to write statements. Plaintiff and her partner were the only staff members not interviews and not and not asked to write a statement. As a result of the defendant King Combs sexual assault, plaintiff has suffered. Here's images. Okay. 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 Hmm. After that, they got severe trauma, eating disorders, all type of shit. This smells bad. Okay, so that's the allegations. There's probably not a monetary amount listed. There's a preservation um, notice sent. Oh, huh. interesting. Interesting. Okay. Okay, people, take that how you want it. Um, I, I would probably like to look up that young woman, but I, I also don't want you guys bullying her or harassing her. I just want to see, like, physically what we're dealing with. Like, well, what type of girl, you know, is King Combs allegedly, like, trying to take advantage of. But whatever. It's all good. Actually, not all good, but, you know, it is what it is. Okay. All right, uh, a little bit more in the Diddy Files. They asked Diddy why the hell his friends ain't talking, and uh, you have you have Ray J saying this. You have seen only like CBJ say something, you know, in defense of Diddy, and all of those people who are his quote unquote, you know, that that's his people, you know, that's his friends. You know, are hesitant, maybe, do you think they're hesitant to say something because, you know, whatever could happen to them? Because, you know, there's there's subpoenas going out, there's this, there's that. Do you think that's what's happening? You, you know, or, or is there another reason why other people ain't speaking out in his defense? I think a lot of people are just trying to understand it. Understand what is and what's not, you know? It's still a big question mark. Uh, pray for everybody though. Prayers go up for everybody. Oh. Well, what do you think about like the idea that like there's people saying it's it's not the Diddy party that the the, the legendary Diddy party that's the uh, was the problem. It's the after party. You think that's more of what the the feds are like looking into here? Not because you've been to those the the regular party. You know what I'm saying? Like everyone's been to those parties. It, it, those, those weren't problematic in any way, according to those like recap videos. And you know, I mean, what do you? What he's talking about, did y'all see Stevie J? Stevie J put out a video basically saying, hey, for all y'all niggas who act like they don't know what a Diddy party looks like, let me put up a video, which is a PR game. I keep telling you they're doing the PR game shit. And, you know, essentially, let me show you the people who were at the Diddy parties. Because what the parties y'all talk about, we don't know about. We only know about these parties. And if these parties were wrong... Look at the faces and the famous faces. Why did I say that? Let's <laughs> go. 
Apparently, this was the 50th birthday party. We've seen Kim K, Travis Scott, Kanye, Post Malone, The Weeknd. Is this is this Will Smith, son? Wait, is this Kobe? Wait, how long ago did Kobe die? When did Kobe die? Oh, it's only been like 20 years ago. Or not 20, four years ago, I mean. Wow, he died in 2020. Snoop Dogg. Mary J. Blige. Okay, Queen Latifah, you see her? Everybody put your glasses up in the air. Let's take a toast to Jay-Z. You at the top, man. Everybody's with you. Not one of them niggas said, said a motherfucking word. <laughs> Is that King Combs real quick? Who else? That's his other son, Justin. Who the heck is this? Kevin Hart? Okay, my boy Kevin in there. I think I seen Jermaine Dupree. It is what it is, man. It is what it is. Okay. Uh, yo, chat, real quick, and we'll get back to some more Diddy stuff in a second. But so I go to Drake concerts yesterday. Chat. It happened again. I go to the concert. I, is J. Cole on this shit? Because I don't know if J. Cole was on this shit. Because by the time I got there, I got there. Perfect time for Drake to come out. He brought Wayne out. He brought Dirk out. Yo, I'm getting so drunk at the concert. I'm getting lit. I'm singing every word. I'm in this box suite. So there's seats in the box suite. But fuck the seats. I'm standing up. I'm singing. I got my eyes on you. I'm doing. Hey, let me tell you this. I ain't never too too too, too proud to be a fan. So, Kristen Christian Combs, man, I ain't gonna lie. I feel like I don't know, bro. The allegations they got against Kristen Combs, I don't feel like this could be real. Like, okay, what I feel like it is. Okay, maybe he made a female take drugs, but, like, it was all consensual. And, like, she was okay with it. Like, I feel like she was probably okay with it. And they took it just to catch a vibe. And then they did whatever they did. Like, no Diddy. You could look at someone and tell... Like, this man, he could get any female that he wants. Let's let's keep it a being. Like, before all the Diddy allegations, first, your father's Diddy. So you're the son of a billionaire. Like... Females fiend over, he's like a Chris, a dark skinned Chris Brown type man, bro. Like, females fiend over the men, like the little pretty boys. Like, they fiend over the men that look like this. No, Diddy. He could get any female he wants. He doesn't have to drug any female to get them. Like, bro, like, let's keep it a bean, bro. Like, all this stuff is coming out just because everyone's looking for a quick come up. Everyone just wants some money off of his family and all these people because they're. They're probably like struggling, broken. They want some money. I guarantee if he offered to pay off, all the allegations will go away. Like that's crazy, bro. You can't even you can't even do anything with anyone anymore. Like you gotta watch out for like the hoes that you even mess with now, because everyone sees you. They see him as a come up. Like in the back of their head, they're not just messing with this man because they think that he's attractive. They're saying, okay, in a few months, I'm gonna make some allegations come out. In a few weeks, I'm gonna blackmail him. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna take the drugs and I'm gonna act like I didn't know that he gave it to me. Like, bro, it's crazy, man. It's literally crazy. I feel bad for him, bro. Like, I really, I genuinely don't believe that he did that. If he did, throw him under the jail. If he did, but I genuinely don't believe he did that. Like, even though all the stuff is going on with his father, and I believe that his father is a very freaky man, and I believe 
his father did a lot of stuff that they claimed that he did. I don't believe this man did like what they're claiming that he did, bro. So let me know how you guys feel about everything. Do you feel like Kristen Combs, he had to do it? I feel like he does not have to do it. Like he's one of the little pretty boys, bro. Like he doesn't have to do a single thing. He could get almost any female that he wants, bro. Come on. But it's your boy, Big X News. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and I'm out.